What's your favorite video game and why? Competitively or like no, like relaxing or like all time? All time. Skyrim has to be. Skyrim. It, it's just such a like beautiful game and there's no other game really just like it. And there's so many like, I don't know, there's so, I played this game since like the PS3 era and I think I was like eight to five years old maybe and I should not have been playing the game. But I don't know. I was like, Every time I play, it's so, I always find something new. And I, I'm like, I'm 19 now. I, yeah. I play it like at least once a year. It's like, you know, some people have like Minecraft that like, the, uh, like that, nostalgia games. Yeah. Like they just have like comfort game. They come back to it. Yeah. Months. Like that's Skyrim for me. And like every time I play, it's just different every single time. It's, and they still update it. It's just crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. And I've never played Skyrim. Dude. Like it's like <laughs> the best role playing game. I don't like the Elder Scrolls. I don't like the multiplayer stuff, but it's like you get to be literally whatever you want to be. Like you don't have to be the, the hero of the story if you don't want to. Like people will hate when they get. <laughs> it's so good. I love it. Uh, so when you say you don't have to be the hero, can you be like an NPC? Or like, well, can if you, you want to, there's like career paths. Like you can be a farmer and just own little properties of lands and shit, up. or you can be like. I'd say there's a, you can be like an assassin, or you yeah. can just be like a, the old, like, knight in shiny armor type thing, or you can just be like, fuck it, I just want to walk around and explore, just be like a, a traveler, but like, I think the main thing, I always play as the, as the, um, high elf, favorite class, because I like doing the magic stuff, yeah, I've already come into the game with like so much magical abilities, and like, I think I did one, one playthrough where I didn't even know it could be a farm or anything, and I was on this, this, uh, side quest, and these ghosts started talking to me. And I was like, okay, I might as well just... Like, I was going to do... I was going to go kill a dragon or something like that. I was like, might as well just stop and do this little side quest. That side quest took like an hour and 30 minutes. I was over here like solving a murder of a boy thing. I looked up YouTube tutorials like, where is this dude's body at? I cannot find it. And, and then so they were like, now that you find our lost son, we can rest in peace. And you can have the keys to our, our shackles. I was like, dude, I kill ghosts all the time. I better kill y'all for this. <laughs> <laughs> but then I was like, they end like get one of your your uh, account like your um friends or whatever you like be friends to see. Yeah. As they get them to run the mill for you, it's like passive income, and then you can like just like yeah, it doesn't work because so you can like spawn there, keep your items there, or just like never leave if you wanted to. But the other thing is cool, but it's like literally, literally everything you can do. That's cool. Yeah, dude, I I enjoy when they put a, so much detail in those games like that like my favorite game all right i have two favorite games three <laughs> well i have three but they're like different categories all time definitely red dead redemption oh my god yeah like red dead 2 i haven't played the first one but i i know i need to i need to because i just recently played Red Dead last year. Well, like actually, last that's the, like the way you're supposed to play it, though, which is funny because you're supposed to play the second one first. Yeah. That's where you get all of, like the pre log. See, that's what my friend Brett told me. Shout out, Brett. My <laughs> Brett was like, dude, you got to play the you got to play the second one, and yeah. then you play the first one. Yeah. So it makes like. I think they more remastered sense. the first one too recently. Did they really? I'm pretty sure they remastered it. But I don't really trust GTA remastered games or not, uh, Rockstar remastered games. They came out with one that for like maybe for like four years back called the Trilogy. Where well, they have uh, Vice City, uh, GTA San Andreas, and GTA 4. And they like remastered it and it looked horrible. It, like, they yeah. tried to make a spin on it where it like still looked retro. Yeah. But it like kind of had like the upper quality of it. But then it was like really laggy, really buggy. And I was like, you're like a triple A company title. You could have, like, I would, I'm, I'm not going to hate you for not getting the game. I've been waiting for GTA 6 since I was like two. Yeah. So I'm not going to hate you if I don't get the game. Just fix it before you give it to me. <laughs> you know what? Uh, company that I think is just like cash grab every time it's pay to play. EA. 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 Yeah. Like, got it. And, it. and it sucks because I am like the biggest FIFA fan. Like, I've been playing FIFA. I've been playing FIFA since I was like in middle school because I, I played soccer my whole life and I was like, this is what me and the boys would play. And so it's just like, it's a nostalgia game for me, but like, kind of cracked at it. Oh my God, 2K for me. It's yeah. like, like, I grew up with a lot of cousins, uh, like, uh, well, all different ages and stuff. And like, one thing we can always agree on is, like, just, like, play video games. Just, like, you know, enjoy your time playing video games. So, anytime we had any arguments of, like, 
who's doing this chore, who getting this last piece of you gotta fight me too. you gotta fight me Yeah, yeah it's like rock paper scissors. Yeah, like you gotta fight me justice for this one, or you gotta like beat you two K for this one. Yeah, of course you always pick the game that you're the best at. But we used to play two K, we used to play Black Slide. I never played like Park uh, at first and I never played we played like a couple of like the actual games, the announcement stuff, but we just really like black uh, black part uh black top. Because you used to have like dunk contests and all these other mini games, but now it's just one v one, three v threes and stuff like that. But like, I love the game, and I feel like it's such like anybody at any age can get into it. But then the people are always going to beat you if their credit card is better than yours. Yeah, like you're, 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 you're like you know this is a joke. Like, oh, he must have a better gaming chair. It's literally that whoever buys the most expensive gaming chair, aka VC, is just better. Like, yeah, you can't miss. You can't miss. Yeah. That's like I, I would always get so pissed playing FIFA now, just because like I'd build like a crazy ultimate team from scratch, and like these fucking sweats, these like twelve year olds who have their mom's credit card has like a ninety like a ninety three Holland and fucking Mbappe. I'm like, bro, I can't compete. I can't compete out here. But uh, yeah. So you're into esports. Yeah. What What is an esport? Okay, so an eSport is any game that can be played competitively, but it has to be player v player. So it can't be player v com or like anything like that. So it has to be against another player. So like Minecraft, not an eSport. Bed Wars could be an eSport. What's Bed Wars? Bed Wars is like, anybody who plays Minecraft probably knows what Bed Wars is. It's like a uh, mini game series where you have to like the island hop between different islands, kill somebody, and then... But the thing is, every time you kill them, they respawn and they respawn at their bed. Right. You have to break their bed in order so they don't respawn. So that's how you get a point. You have to take all of these up. It basically is like a big ass tycoon. Right. Where you like build your own stuff, and so that's what like because you're going against another player. There's a clear objective. That's the esports. Well, or like there's this um, to like really break up what's the difference between like a esport and not an esport. I always say like Tetris because yeah. there's like Tetris ninety nine. We're going against other players. And like Tetris, other players are crazy. I can't even move that fast like dude, in any game. You should see so, my roommate. Dude, I don't understand how they do it. <laughs> I don't. I can't even like process of what they're doing. I play like Overwatch and stuff. So I'm like, I, I, I have a pretty good reaction time. Like, I don't. Like, you're matching these shapes and stuff. My roommate is like, I think, don't quote me in this. I'll have to ask him. But he is like top 1500 Dang, in the world for insane. Tetris. And he's showing me videos of people who are, like, grandmasters at Tetris. Oh, my God. So, the Tetris community is huge. Yeah. It's huge. Because it's been around since, like, 19, like, the so 80s. Like it's one of the first games. Yeah. But, yeah, like... So, there's, there's like, videos of people beating, like, the Tetris, the game Tetris. And the last level is, like, them... You can't... The, the blocks are invisible on the bottom, but they show you which one's going to drop. And you just have to remember each line. Each line that yeah, comes down. Like, like okay, how the fuck do you do that? Like, you're, like, matching everything, like, your muscle memory, I guess. But the, what, what I was going to say was the difference between an eSport and, a, like, a non-eSport, like, I was using Tetris as an example. Like, Tetris 99 and some of their Battle Royale features where you're going against another player, like, actively going against another player, that is an eSport because you're going against it. But if it's, like, just the regular, like, you're by yourself and you're trying to get the fastest time, that's not an eSport. Even though you're, like, well, me and him are sitting next to each other, which I said, because the fastest time. You're not really competing to each other. You're competing against time. Yeah. So that's more like a speed run. So speed running is art esports, but they're like, you know, because yeah, that's the difference between like a like say a regular sport where you're like, you're comparing LeBron James to a person who just does free throws. Yeah. There's, not, there's no competition. There's like it has to be competition. Yeah, it's kind of like the golf and like the long the long drive competition. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So like Call of Duty esport, yeah, it's like one of the generic esports. What's like the what's like the top esport right now? Smash Bros. Smash Bros. It always will be Smash Bros. It's just the easiest to get into. Yeah, it's the hardest to master, which is like any game that wants to be considered esport or wants to be or wants to have a really good fandom should do exactly what Smash Bros. does. It has every single character that you can, every nostalgic character, no matter what age you are. They have like new characters like Mario, the Sonic, etc. Well, I wanna say they're new, but like they have like their new versions of them or like the different Pokemon and stuff. They also have an old character so, like Mr. Game and Watch, Pac Man and stuff. Yeah. And so any age range can like, oh, that's appealing, that's cool. And then any anybody can pick up the controller and get the basics understanding down. Yeah. But it's really hard to master, really hard because it's all about timing and 
like zoning and all these other things. So when you watch someone who's really good at it, you're like, and you can see the difference. You're like, holy, yeah, that's amazing. And so that's what you should do. Like you shouldn't make the game too easy, but you should make it too hard. Yeah. So with Smash Bros, because I have one of my friends Beck, they compete in tournaments and they go to like a lot of esports tournaments. Are they strictly playing on Switches, like Nintendo Switches, or are they playing like on a keyboard? I mean, Smash Bros. is a Switch exclusive. You can't play it anymore. Okay, so you have to play it with... Unless you have like some type of encoder. I know they have like a pro controller. Yeah, yeah. So there's no... And most of the... I've I've run a lot of esports tournaments, and I know a little bit of the... I'm not a master of it, but I know a little bit of the the, uh, scene about that, because every game has its own culture behind it, and different. they expect different things. And I know Smash Bros. Like they don't care what controller you use. There's like Pro controllers, there's yeah. Joy Con, there's See, the Nintendo 3DS controller. I don't know, but there's all types of things. So you can just use whatever is like most comfortable to you. Yeah. So. I think that's uh, another thing that I was gonna say. That I feel like the reason why Smash Bros. is so. Please tell me this is still recording. You should turn your sleep off. It's still recording. Is it? Oh my. Yeah. How do I turn the sleep off? All right, well, that was three minutes of our time that... Do you want to start over? Or? Nah, I'll just okay. jump right back in the conversation because I still know what I was talking about. Okay. Um, well, I hope that first 15 minutes... Re- yeah. Same. But I was going to say, that's the. I think that's another reason why Smash is such a big eSport is because the... There's not a large barrier of entry. Like, if you just get a uh, a cheap switch, like you can play Smash and get good at it. Like, you know, it's not like one of those games where you have to have a PS4 or PS5 PC. or a PC. Yeah. So. Yeah, like switches are like what like the light version of like a hundred thirty dollars. Yeah. It's like a Christmas gift. So. Yeah, exactly. Like my little niece has a switch. Yeah, like I think I had a switch when I first got the campus, and I sold it for some change <laughs> <laughs> I, I love my switch though I had a Skyrim morning and I used to play it when, before I went to bed uh, reminiscing <laughs> so you work at an esports yeah I can you uh, explain what it is I'm a contract here for Vessel B-E-S-L uh, so the USG has a contract with them for like two years and I think the contract's almost up uh, sadly What's the contract? It's like they teach us how to do certain things in production and event planning, and we give them extra hands to run run events. And then I think there's like some money put into it, but I'm not allowed to say it. Yeah, Under. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so they had a contract. But um, obviously, they, they're restructuring now, which is a good thing, because there's a lot of things that I would have done better. But it's still a good opportunity because it's a high school league and not a lot of high schoolers have it. And then, unfortunately, because I got out of high school during COVID and stuff, but right after I left, well, I guess they've been doing it for like two years now, but right after I left, they started doing the same esports thing in my high school. But right. after I left, I was like, well, yeah. But, um... All right. Jesus. We're back. <laughs> yes, a high school league. And, like, I think it's really cool for the high school league to do that because it's, like, an extracurricular for them. Yeah. And so, like, they get to actually get... Because I think, like, every game where of its went, we're, like, want that opportunity to play a game on a stage and have all these people watch them compete. I think it's just such an amazing opportunity. But the business side of everything is kind of not the best, especially when it comes to the actual event planning. Like, we had this one event, and with the venue, they didn't have a floor, a floor plan. So, I think they, no one knew where to set things up exactly. And they were kind of going with the flow. Sorry. Thank you. I'm going to turn this down. They were, like, going with the flow. And it was, like, obviously, it, it sounds good. Like, no, like, laid back and stuff. But we were running an event like that. It's not. Because people didn't see how much effort you put into it. Yeah. And then... It was a couple of times where I would suggest a uh, solution to a problem they were having. So like, it was just one thing. They couldn't figure out how to put, how to set up the PCs and the monitors. And I gave them the idea to, they had like these two portable tables, like really long tables. 
and I said, uh, what if we just space the tables out a little bit so the way that that way we can have the PCs behind them and just the monitors on top so I haven't like look seen this. Yeah. Have the PCs behind them and give it a little bit of space so in case something happens because PCs are like notorious. No matter what PC you buy, no matter how good it is, something bad is going to happen, especially when there's so many PCs like that close to you, close to each other. So like give them enough space for the TOs to like get back there and fix it, but like just give them that gap so you can work. And then it was like, uh, they started running running different ideas to the head, and then they finally went back to my idea after like five ideas. It was like thrown out. I was like, we could have like saved so much time. Not saying I have all the perfect ideas, but they didn't even try mine before they tried to track all the other ones. Oh, they look at where we landed. And then they're like an esports company, so you think they'll know a little bit about like computers and stuff. Yeah. They had the. Uh, you know, like the tablecloth sitting on top of tables to like cover the floor and stuff like that, so it looks like it's just a big, a big on table. They have them covering the PC, and one thing about PCs is that you need air to go through. That's why they have those all those fans. Yeah, because it will overheat and it's like it's it, it can like blow up basically. You can go like fire. Yeah, so like it can like if there's not getting enough air and any flow, and if you put those thick consoles right. And you have all those PCs taking the air. They they don't blow air out. They suck air in. Yeah. And so all those PCs, like, I'll give you 30 minutes tops. There was, like, at least 10, 13 PCs all over that table. And I was like, just put it outside the thing. And then, like, it's nothing harsh. Put it outside the claw. Put it behind the table. No one can see it unless you're looking for it. And it's going to be behind the stage anyway. It's not like the viewers are going to see us. And the gamers don't care. The gamers don't care. They're just warming up. It's not yeah. like, that's, that's not where they're going to compete at. Cause they have everyone with being this really big, you know, this tour, uh, you know, those uh, eighteen wheelers that turns like the tour stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we turned that into an esports stage, so we had like. I was gonna ask how big, of like of these events, like oh, you have the you obviously have the big stage, but like how many people are in, are in attendance? So that's another thing that I was gonna say. They didn't have their, their, like, capacity to code because they were expecting 900 people right they expecting 900 people so we had like we had like uh 1800 chairs just in case each person brought another person yeah but and still like a fuck ton of people after all the only like 130 people came which is a good amount of people but only 130 people came right but after all of this all that was said and done thankfully we were only 130 people because we found out that's what that's no staff no staff anything we found out after that the venue's carry capacity was only 300 people. So if we had 100 people, we would have got the like, state marshal or something come down and like the fire marshal come down and be like, y'all not wrap this up. Like, yeah. I can't be here. I gotta kick some people out. And we had, just to put it in perspective, they had like the 130 people, maybe closer to 200 people already in this crowd. And then the vessel themselves had about like uh, 15, 20 person staff. And then we also had contractors, not contractors, but like vendors. We had like this one company who were working with five people. They're bought some four other people. We had um, we had like the actual people who run the venue. We they have they're coming out here. We had some police officers. So all that together is like two hundred, maybe twenty people, two hundred people. So if employed, no, uh, oh, in the venue, in the venue. So okay. like, and then we also had that big area taken up by the tour bus thing. And so, if everybody did, let's say every guest brought another guest with them, we would have been kicked out. Yeah. So they need like they should have been more prepared about that. And so I'm thankful because the tickets were free. And so I guess people were just buying them and stuff, but they had sold sold nine hundred tickets. So they assumed nine hundred people were coming. Yeah. I guess that's what happens when you say tickets are free. A lot of people are going to sign up and then yeah. just not show up or something. Yeah. So, do they put on these, like, how big of a company is Vessel? Like, do they put on, like, whenever you see, I know I see videos on Instagram of, like, <laughs> of, like, Fortnite competitions where it's, like, a whole stadium yeah. that's, like, packed to the brim. Yeah, it's just are, like that. So, are, are they putting those kind of uh, tournaments on, or is it, like, are there other companies that compete with them? They're, like... They put those type of tournaments on. Their audience isn't the biggest because they're mainly just the gamers, their families, and maybe like a couple other people. Right. So their audience isn't like obviously, not say obviously, but like companies that throw like the actual 
title company, so like Fortnite, if Epic Games do it, a lot of people will come because it's like Epic Games hosting it. Yeah. And stuff. And so for this being the high school league, obviously the only people in the high school are going to be in the loop, right? Right. And then they don't, which is like a shame because they don't do as good marketing as I would assume a company of that nature because they have their multi million dollar company. They like sponsor Kai Sinat. They like all the type of things. They, they give out money. Like their private school are insane. Yeah. Like their private schools are insane. But, um, yeah, but we like this last event, they had this. Uh, we were in the esports thing, right? And right above us in our venue thing, we, there was an esports convention. Uh, convention. And remember, our tickets were free, so they could have came down here. Yeah. Time. But the esports convention was mainly for high budget people, like uh, governors, politicians, stuff like that, to like pass. Because everything in esports has to go to the government because we need the funding and stuff like that. Yeah. And so there, there, there was the people that were trying to convince, hey, this is like a productive and like really good opportunity for all people. Like not even just the kids, but all people. So like it's a good opportunity for everybody. And they didn't tell like like people came down there and it was like, oh, I didn't know this was here. Yeah, they did. The conference was in planning for at least a couple of months, and this event was in planning for at least a couple of weeks. There's at least a. Uh, some crossover where you could have told them, "Hey, we're going to be here too." And, I don't mm-hmm. know. That's feel like I'm not saying I could do better, but I feel like it could be improvement. It could be improving, and they're restructuring now, which I'm happy for the for them because a lot of people who work for Gusto are like friends of a friend. Like, yeah. I don't think any of them actually gained. I don't want to talk bad because there's a lot of really nice people and everybody's really cool, but I don't think a lot of them have the best resume or rap sheet when it comes to like event planning or customer service or anything like that. Yeah. Is there like a certain um, e-sport company that is like number one? Or is it kind of like they kind of... They kind of fluctuate um, because e-sports, not just e-sports, but gaming is all trends. Like you can ask any gaming YouTuber, any wannabe gaming YouTuber, anything like that. It's so hard to put trends. By the time one trend is over, it's like, and in the esports, especially the big companies, they're organizing these things for like months, right? Yeah, they're organizing them for months. And so they take these big games that is big right now. So let's go like five months ago. It was this game called Content Warner. Just came out. And yeah. It was off of it was like a spinoff of Lethal Company, where you you and your friends have to meet this quota stuff like that. Big game. Every like. People loved it. It lasted a week. Like, and so if you find games like that, that's why Fortnite and stuff, even after being a company, being a, a, like a gaming giant for like two years, people were so hesitant to make like tournaments around because it was so like, we don't know how long it's going to last. We don't know how long your lifestyle, like, your life, the lifespan is going to last. Because there's nothing yeah. at the end of the day. There's stuff you can do to like, kind of like improve your lifespan like Fortnite they always add different things they hit you with a lot of nostalgia they even got me I quit Fortnite ex Fortnite professional mm-hmm. <laughs> but I quit Fortnite and they add OG Fortnite back and they added some some of my favorite anime as a character um, yeah they gotta they play added, it they added the like ODM gear and the Avatar like fire. the Star Wars yeah and I was like I gotta go back so they were doing really good on like keeping that retention but as a company or as a person who hosts hosting events you don't know because you want to make money too. Like yeah. that's the whole reason. At the end of the day, no matter what you say, no matter like, I don't want to give everybody the best experience. At the end of the day, you want to make some type of profit, yeah. right? And so you don't know how popular this game is going to be when it's actually released because you can have all this buzz like, oh my god, I can't wait for that Mortal Kombat tournament. That was then Tekken came out. I don't want to play Mortal Kombat. Like it's just that fast. So there's no big company at all. Yeah. It's more like. There's some names out there, obviously, like especially the titles like Epic Games, EA, Sony, stuff like that. There's some titles out there that, like, if they host an event, people are going to go. Yeah. But it's more like what game is being played. Yeah, I think that's what interested me about the company that you work for, is that they're not, correct me if I'm wrong, they're not a software developer. They don't develop any games. No. So they're, they're mainly a third-party company that uses games and like makes a profit but not, makes profit off of the events and I just realized that like if just the developers themselves hosted events like do you think they probably already do that 
No, the developers definitely already own yeah. Vex, but uh, Vessel is uh, it's a child company to a company called Stiegler Tech. Mm-hmm. So they make technology and stuff. So that's where they get most of their funding from. That's where they make most of their money. But um, yeah, they don't they don't even host their esports events by like esports standard. Yeah, because like say I'm really into Smash Bros. I'm really into Smash Bros. Right. They don't host Smash only tournaments unless it's like a TA TS thing. But their regionals, their states and stuff, they're not Smash only. It's more like an Olympic thing. They like host their esports more as like an Olympic style. So, so like there there'll be like different different video, games, play. different games, and then they don't play it through one runtime. They don't go like all through like from five o'clock to six o'clock. We're only playing Smash from six to seven. We're only playing two K. Like that, they don't do that. They do. First game Smash, second game 2K, third game Overwatch. So we'll go back to Smash, 2K, Overwatch. They, they do that repetitive, which is like cool in nature if you like just love all those games or you just like seeing people compete. You just like the culture, which is cool. But that's also why the Olympics is once every four years. Because <laughs> like you turn on boxing or you turn on the NBA or the NFL or anything and you expect to watch football. You expect to watch NBA. Yeah. But if I turn on... If I see if I see a YouTube thumbnail, I know they stream a lot of YouTubers. Which, if I see a thumbnail, I see a Street Fighter, a lot of with da 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 da. And I turn it on, thirty minutes go by, and now you're playing Smash. You lost me. I'm like, what? Yeah. Especially if I never heard of you before. I'm like, you're here to watch Street Fighter. Like, yeah, like, I want to I want to see people hit a high duke. I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to see down bees and aerials. I, I don't want to see uh, some chain combos. Yeah. And then they go like and then they they double down on it and they go I know we're playing Rocket League. You're like, dude, Bro. I don't care about Rocket League. And then a lot of times, because no matter what production you're in, anybody who's doing production, they can say something is going to go wrong. No matter what you do, like something's going wrong right now. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So a lot of times we're behind schedule. And so they'll, they're looking at the schedule chart. They're looking at the um, like the brackets and stuff. And they go, okay, cool. So Smash is going to be back more than 30 minutes. I'll just go do something else. I've been back for 30 minutes, which isn't good for watch time, but at least you have like a person watching. Yeah, and so they come back thirty minutes, and they're still playing Smash. I mean, they're still playing like Two K, Rocket League. And you're like, dude, and they don't know. We obviously we're not telling them. All right, guys, we're best and go. So we're gonna get take a break. You're not, we're not telling them that. We've got, we're trying to fix it. Yeah. And so they're 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 expecting this time. They 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 came even though they're not paying. They're they're paying their time. Yeah. And so they're expecting in thirty minutes. Like imagine you you bought cable TV, and you looked at the dialogue being you say the Big Bang the Big Bang Theory is gonna come on at seven o'clock. Right. And then you come back a little bit later, seven to ten, but dang, I'm ten minutes late. You click it on, you see two and a half men. You're like, what? Yeah. yeah you'll be upset a little bit, a little frustrated. You don't want to watch it anymore. This, that's exactly what happens, which is like good for the Olympics because there's people, you know when the Olympics are going to do. They do it day to day, and it's like every four years because they know, uh, I think a list of the Olympics know, it's not a sustainable thing to do. Yeah. Like, I mean, they've been doing this from the beginning of time, but it's like no one's going to sit down click a TV to see a ranch for it. Like, you want to know what you're about to watch. Yeah. It's just human. So, going back to, like, eSports standard. Mm-hmm. So, the eSports standard is, like, you play one game for the whole tournament, and that's it. There's a certain etiquette to any company, and especially in um, an industry such as gaming, where every single ga- gaming has their own community and has their own expectations. So most often than not, unless it's like some other event, you're playing one game or you're playing one genre of game. Right. So like there's YouTubers and stuff like that. They go playing fighting games for 10 hours straight. We're starting with Tekken. Now we're going to Smash Bros. Now we're going to Street Fighter. Now we're going to the Mortal Kombat. And that's even, that's so entertaining because most people who play fighting games play all those games. Yeah. Or they like understand how the games work, et cetera, et cetera. Or they like they have an interest in the game, but if you're playing Smash Bros. and then you start playing Farming Simulator, you done lost it. First you lost the dopamine, and then you lost that. <laughs> That's what happened at the esports event. They played Farming Simulator. Are you serious? There's an esports. There's a there's an esports around Farming Simulator because they have a three v three mode where you try to collect hay faster than the other team on the other side of the river. But oh, it's the fuck. slowest game. <laughs> I've ever seen. Like, honestly, how do you even get into that? I feel like there's, like, not even, like, that many people that play that game. Dude, 
I don't know. <laughs> I I didn't know it was an esports until I saw it on the screen, and I'm like, but the thing is, they set them up so bad because I already have a problem, as I stated, with the fact that is like multiple games going on. Right. But then the way they did it, they played Smash. You, get, you see all these colorful people fighting all these loud noises, all these beautiful explosions. And then you played Rocket League. You see these flying cars, fast paced, hitting these amazing trajectories for goals and stuff. And then you see, uh, what was it, Valorant, all these high take angles, switching, shooting, blah, blah, blah. All these little beautiful, vibrant games. They're vibrant games. Yeah, you're getting all these flashing colors. And they're, they're like the they're fast, definition dude. of a dopamine rush. Yeah. Like everything's fast, everything's colorful. Everything's loud. And then you go to farming center. You're like, what the? <laughs> and then everybody at the, at the thing. I kid you not. They had to pay people to get hype in the crowd. At the free event? Yeah, they pay people. They pay people an off-white uh, clothing brand. Like right. the brand, the, like, the $15,000 shirt brand. Yeah. They pay people off-white. They pay people on controllers. They pay people on uh, physical money. They, I think they had something $400. For whoever jumped the, the highest in the crowd or whatever and like was the loudest and gave the most energy. But it was like, you're doing all this to try to make it seem interesting. Just play yeah. interesting game. Just play an interesting game. Because it was like the slowest. The game was five, the game was five minutes long. Like five minutes long. So it's not a, to- a horribly time consuming game. Yeah. But when you're watching a tractor go really slow against the field. And then watching somebody else come back behind him with a hay thing, and then processing hay, and then see someone come back with a tractor, going across to that, dropping the tractor off, coming back and picking up another load. Dude, I came to watch video games, not see some dude work for the nine to five. I don't know. I kind of get it though. <laughs> like after, I feel like after watching like Valorant or like Apex Legends, like all the like flashing colors and shit. I feel like just watching just a simple. I'm a simple man. I love seeing a simple farming. <laughs> it's the funniest thing because everybody comes at those events, right? Yeah. So you, you'll be talking to somebody who's a, who's a, has an entirely different life than you. And I was in charge of the um, the STEM booth where they had the farming simulator so people could just play while they were competing. STEM booth? What is that? Science, technology. Oh, okay. Since it's a high school league, they also want to incorporate high school things so they make sure they know that they have their own things so it was like, this is for this is for educational. This is for school. And anyways, I was in far. I was trying to do a farming simulator thing, and I'm talking to this dude. I'm teaching him to play the game. And he was like, he was like, oh yeah, I'm a farmer. I go, I get the stuff. And I was like, oh okay. <laughs> and he's playing the game. He was like, I don't understand how to drive this tractor. I did. I done did this by the time. I done did this for the last five years. I can't move this damn thing in a straight line. <laughs> he's like, dude, I don't like this game. <laughs> but it's the funniest thing. Oh, and like I was saying with the. Um, that it's like a high school thing. These kids, they're winning like I think the last grand prize was like one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. No. Like, yeah, it was one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. So I gave them to a fifteen year old. And the thing is, it's a catch. So there's a catch, right? Right. So they get half the money up front. They get half the money. In order to get the other half the money, they have to talk to financial coaches and they have to talk to scholarship. That's uh, so smart. Yeah, they ha- they like have to talk to a, a guy's counselor and stuff about their scholarship opportunities and where they can invest this money in for their education. So they have to do that in order to get the other half of the so money. So they don't spend it on stupid shit. Yeah, so like you can keep, like, you get $120,000, you can keep, like, keep that change or stuff. But if you want the rest of it, you have to, like, go to, you have to, like, get, you don't have to go to college. You don't even have to, like, take it seriously, but you have to sit down and listen to these people for, like, 30, 40 minutes. That's kind of cool. Yeah, because it's, it's school. It's, it's about school. So, it's, like, really cool. I wish they had that, uh, something like that when you win the lottery. I know, I know they have the, the, the thing when you, when, you, when you win the lottery where you can choose to get the lump sum, the lump sum or get, like, payments over. Which one would you do? Lump sum. You're doing lump sum? I'm doing the lump sum because I know, like, all right, I'm obviously going to spend some of the lump sum on stupid shit, but I feel like I have enough willpower to be like, no, I'm going to set a big fat stack aside and invest it. I don't have that willpower. I don't. I'm a consumer at heart. <laughs> I'll buy everything maybe when I have enough money. But um, I, I, I never wanted to live a luxury life. I just want to live a comfortable life. Right. So I feel like just steady payment. 
it's like what it's like a fifty million dollar thing. Just like right. that's the rest of my life. Does it give me a good three thousand dollars a month? I'm see that's my problem. I like, like I'm a little comfortable. I don't want to worry. I'll still work. I, I won't work forty hours, but I'll still work. That's my thing. I I want I don't want to work, <laughs> but I want to experience shit. Like, see, I, I like want to go around the world. I want to like see everything that, that's before like I die. My idea. That's my idea of comfortable life. But right, yeah, I feel like that's my luxury. Life. I don't like luxury is just sad. I don't. I feel like yeah. once you have everything, you have nothing. Like you have you have nothing to work for. Yeah, and at heart, I feel like. My work ethic's too strong. If I have everything and I have nothing to work for, what am I doing? Like, I just need like to... That's when you help other people. I mean... Just devote yeah. your life to other... I mean, yeah. I guess that's one route, but a lot of people don't. <laughs> and I don't... I'm not better than anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you have that self-awareness. I'm glad you have that self-awareness. Um, how much... Like, you said this kid's got, like, $120,000. Yeah, some of the kids got, like... I just 12,000. Like what? What esport? I mean, it's really about how much they have in their budget at the end of the day. Yeah. But the main games they play are because it's a high school league, so there's obviously a lot of like backlash of like what games can be played. Like a lot of schools on like Call of Duty because they show blood and shooting and stuff. Right. But um, like the main recurring game is always Smash Rivalry right? because it's the easiest game. It's like the easiest to visualize and see. Um, they always try to add a sport game like Madden or 2K. Yeah. 2K is a little bit harder because they don't have any type of cross progression. So when it's a tournament style like this, where everybody's like, because they were doing regionals and state, so they're from different, not just different schools, they're from different cities, they're from different counties, or from different like places. So they can't play together, and so they have to play together during like while this game is doing states, you're doing prelims, which is like kind of like throws off the balance. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like you gotta do what you have to do. But it's like those type of games are easy, especially for the dad or the sport lovers out there. They can see it and they're like, it feels almost identical to like watching what it actually be again. Yeah. Kind of. Um. How much do you think like a someone is a professional at esport? How much do you think they make a year? It's really hard to say because I guess it depends on first the what. What's your like your favorite esport? Like, what do you play? Overwatch. Overwatch. How much do you think in a like a retainer fee? Like, not not winning any tournaments or anything, or with winning tournaments? Both. Like, okay, say so like an average Overwatch player who's still a professional, and then like you're goaded number one in the world right now. Okay, so most people who are professional gamers are probably already top to creators or streamers, and if you're good at the game, it's not hard to keep people watching. Yeah. So I'm gonna say at least. 50,000 just being generous because I know some companies who like pay for their gamer they give you like an actual salary like yeah. you're, gonna, you're gonna play for me for $23,000 a year like so that's some companies they're not all companies but you're gonna play for me you're gonna, you're gonna make $23,000 a year because you're making like maybe like $12,000 $13 an hour but you're gonna play with this game you have to have this yeah. so you have to keep that so set and then they're also like a constant massage so I'm being like a little humble and saying like that's like double a North Carolina teacher's salary yeah because if you think like Ninja for a while, right? He he won a couple of tournaments. He was like a big streamer in like 2016 and stuff. Yeah, I think he made at least multi million. Yeah, he's a millionaire. Yeah, so it, I guess it really depends on the state that you're in, like not state as in like location, but like wherever your game is, like hype wise, and wherever you are hype wise, and the, the rest is like that. And then I would say if you're winning tournaments as well. The, I would say on the low end of tournaments, you're adding it's like a it's like a company bonus basically. I would say you're adding like twelve thousand dollars easily. That's insane. Yeah. That's actually crazy. I'd love to see the numbers on like on oh, flow Yeah, like I'd love to see like the the GDP <laughs> that esports provides. You know what yeah. I mean? Oh my god, it's so they make so much money. The biggest reason they make so much money. It's because it takes so little money to start. Yeah. You can literally make esports off of one PlayStation. You can have one PlayStation hooked up to a big ass TV that and like you can already own the TV. Right. You can rent the TV. Just have one PlayStation hooked up to this TV. And if they're really good at the game, people will watch. Yeah. It's it's that simple. It's that human. Like people will watch like LeBron James warm up. Yeah. Like they literally will <laughs> they watch his live stream him just shoot me. Like, they will watch, and they, so a lot of people will pay. Yeah, he's so, number one in the world. Yeah, but the only thing is with that is a lot of companies see that, and they're like, 
that's gonna be easy. I don't have to pay a lot, and I can make a lot. But they don't do. They don't know anything about esports. They don't know about esports etiquette. They don't. Know, they know about e. They know about event planning, but they don't know about this community. And people expect this thing. That's why a lot of them just go under it because they expect it to be easier than what it is. Yeah, I mean, they probably have the same problem that regular companies or companies have with like actual athletes. Is like, end of the day, these people are still people, and they're not a money machine like a cash cow you know what I mean like even though in their eyes they are a cash cow and they do make a lot of fucking money from them like they still need to be treated like people yeah so I get that unless you're a Disney employee unless you're a Disney employee <laughs> <laughs> and then you, you, you do whatever Walt says <laughs> yeah you do that mouth's been a speak how hard do you think it is to become like a professional esports athlete compared to like like a professional like sport sports athlete because obviously they can't be compared like physically but like just saying with like the amount of barriers you have to go through and like just the, the statistics of it I'll say it's a little bit easier than in becoming a professional sport player and a lot of esports people will hate me for this but you have to you have to admit it's a lot of physical things for actual sports, and not that's that's not the, just the first barrier. And then you have to be better than this guy and that guy, this guy. And then after you're better than all those people, you have to prove it more by winning this ring, that ring, this ring. Yeah. And then you have to be not only the best, better than all the other teams, you have to be better than all the other players on your team. Yeah. So you have all, especially in conferences like the NBA, you're beating like you're trying to beat like closer to like ten thousand people. Yeah, but then you, they compare you to like people in history, and it's like, well, definitely in basketball. Basketball is like, yeah, I personally think basketball is statistically the hardest sport to get professional at because mm-hmm. there's only five spots on the team, and you have to be at least six foot. And then that's another thing because I'm using the word professionally very loosely. Yeah, because in esports you don't have to be the best. Right, you don't have to be the top 500 player. You just have to, be, like, because professional to me is just you're being paid to do it, right? Right. You just have to be likable, hateable, or relatable. Literally, you, there's a dude named Dr. Disrespect. Uh, he, I guess he fell off a couple of years ago, maybe. Dr. Disrespect, he used to, he make bank for people hating him. Right. And then you had people like Shroud or um, uh, XQZ who are gamers, and people just love, they love how they act, they, and Shroud, I'm not gonna lie, Shroud is fucking cracked. I mean, he is just one of the best gamers. Yeah. But that's not what people watch him. They watch him because he's such a genuinely like, I've never seen the man rage. Right. I, I would rage if I was in his position. I've never seen the man rage. He's just such a genuinely nice person. People just like to see him, and that's all you need. Okay. That's turn night mode. <laughs> yeah, it's turn night mode. Oh, there's a turn night outside. That's cool. That's weird. But that, like, that's all you need. Because people in actual sports, they can hate you, love you, or whatever. But if you're good at the game, if you're good at the sport, you're good. But right. if you're not good at the sport and people just like you, you're not going anywhere. Yeah. It's like, there's people who's like, oh, he's a cool guy, but I'm not paying him $14 million to sit on the bench. I'm paying him a couple million dollars. I'm like, there's just that. And then, like I said, there's that barrier because, like, say NBA, you have to be at least six foot to just make it a little bit like the minor league or whatever. Yeah. And then you have to be better at all these extra t- shooting, dribbling, passing, all those 2K stats, whatever. Yeah. You have to be better than that. And this, you just have to be able, you don't have to have a game system half the time. You just have to go to, like, there's, you can go to the library, get a library card for like 15 bucks. Play games in the library computer, the computer lab. Post it, post it, like record it somehow. Post it, and you're like, and if you make money, you're a professional. That's the literally all it takes. That makes sense. Yeah, I definitely agree with you on that. Because um, sometimes when people are like, "Oh, you don't know how hard it is to become a professional esport," well, and I'm it's, like, it is definitely hard, but not as hard. Yeah, you come to like, see, like no, like. I love esports. I will defend it for my life, but I'm not gonna die on the hill of ignorance. You know? Yeah, yeah. But like, obviously, physically, it's harder to become a professional athlete. Mm-hmm. And you know, there's physical limitations that like people's bodies like can't. And not everyone can be 
Michael Phelps, now everyone can be LeBron James yeah. or Messi. Yeah. Um, but like, are there people like that in the esports world where there's like a LeBron James, a Messi? Definitely. Oh my God. Like, like I was saying, Shroud. No matter what game he touches, fucking amazing man. He's just so good. It's mainly because his aim. He sort of didn't see it. I won't say he started. I started watching him. And his uh, like CSGO days and stuff. I was like, maybe like three years old. <laughs> I started watching it in the CSGO days. Beautiful aim, beautiful game sense. Like, if there was something happening in the game, crack. And then he moved yeah. over to PUBG, crack still. Beautiful aim. beautiful. And he's just such a good person to watch. Not just because he's into, like, not just because he's nice stuff, but he's entertaining. Right. He's just entertaining. And um, he, then Fortnite got big. He switched over to Fortnite. He never played Fortnite for a long time. But he switched over. He played a couple of games with Fortnite. His first game, I think he dropped it like a twenty bob in the time when Ninja wasn't even dropping twenty bobs yet. It was like, he was going off. Oh my it, god! It doesn't take him long to adapt to any game. And that when you say like, are there any LeBron James in the esports? I wouldn't say there's anybody like if you're good at one game. I wouldn't say it's a LeBron James. You have to be good at multiple genres, yeah. multiple games to be considered like the best. And see, that's where I'm like, is it harder to do that? In, all right, say like you're someone who has the physical ability to become a messy LeBron James, whatever, top dude, top guy or girl of your sport. But you also have the ability to become the top esport champion or whatever person. Do you think it's harder because you have to master all those little skills and like the amount of time that you have to put into that? Or do you... I would to say as roughly. About the same. I would still say there's a lot of... Because it's a physical thing. So, obviously, you have to take more breaks than a gamer does if you're, uh, like, playing basketball or swimming or something. Right. But at the end of the day, if you think of it... Because I'm a gamer, I'm going to say this term. If you think of it as a skill treat. So, let's just take LeBron as as a, as a um, example. He's not just good at basketball. He's good at dribbling. He's good at passing. He's good at understanding where he's at on the court, where his teammates are. Yeah. He's really good at... Um, He's really good at shooting, dunking, all these type of things. Like that's like five things to list off. And if you take each one of these things and add them to a five, like five games, there's about the same, almost the same. But the only thing different is obviously there's some things that you know like transferable skills. Like you know, be like you go for a resume. You know, these are my transferable skills. Like shooting, passing, dribbling. That won't set. That won't be the same if. LeBron James suddenly went to baseball tomorrow. Yeah. He certainly, he's just suddenly started driving NASCAR. Would not be the same. He just wouldn't. But if I started, if I've been playing Overwatch and then I automate, I, I just go to Valorant, my aim is still going to be a, roughly the same. But yeah. In game sense, I just know, understand how the game works. It's probably going to be a little bit better than your average beginner. And if I go, take that same skills and go over to Smash Bros, my controller feel about the same. My understanding of zoning and stuff is going to be somewhat the same because there's certain abilities in certain games that are very similar to certain games. Like, I was, um, you could play a game, right? Let me see if I can find the best example. I play Overwatch, right? For the right. thing. But I also play a lot of single player games. So, when I was first starting Overwatch, I was playing Cassidy. And I was like, this dude plays exactly like Arthur Morgan. Right, exactly. I mean, this is Arthur Morgan from Red Dead. Uh, yeah, or from Red Dead. And then I was playing Hanzo, and I was like, "Bro, this trajectory, this bullet, this this arrow, just like Tomb Raider." I feel like I'm just shooting like a bow and arrow. It's just like Tomb Raider. Yeah. So I was like I'm taking these skills, and I'm like, it's just easier. But at the same time, it's like a lot of different genres. So I, I would say it's about the same, but just esports. I mean, uh, this bit actual sports is just a little bit harder. Yeah. All right. I yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. I wanted to see your take on that because yeah. I know I know a lot of gamers that would be like, "It's not that." It's yeah. Not that no. yeah, 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 exactly. Like, as a person, because I'm a skater, uh, I play. A lot, I, when I was younger, I can't do it anymore because of my uh, health conditions. I used to play a lot of sports. Right. I understand how hard the sports are, but I also understand how hard some esports are. Because I swear, I, I swear, if you sit any of those NBA athletes or two K not in two K. Uh, uh, NFL, NBA, and those athletes sitting in front of a uh, controller, they're not beating Shroud. They're not. Yeah. So I guess there's just different skills. If it was possible, I would love to see like a, a, a statistic of like the statistics of like 
the percentage of how like possible it is to become like a professional NBA player versus a professional esports player versus a professional esports player because the amount of people that play esports is way more than the amount of people that play basketball because just just because like the availability of it. I'll say percentage was, I think the esports will be higher, but I think ratio wise it'll be the same. What do you mean? Because I feel like if you take 10 people of different things, of different, uh, so you take 10 people of esports, take 10 people of sports, and you can see the age groups of people in esports, so like 10 year olds, 100 year olds, like 80 year olds, 20, 30 year olds, stuff like that. Right. And then you, you take the same, you take 10 people from, um, from sports course, and they're going to be around like 20, 30, like in a physical prime. Yeah, uh, they're gonna be like they're like making money. Like, not, I'm not counting college or anything like that, but they're making money. And you tell you ask them how hard was it to like get into that position, and then they're gonna tell you like oh, I had to do this, 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 this. They devoted their whole life. Yeah, exactly. But with esports, like we were saying earlier, it's such an easy thing to get into. All these esports people have to be all the other hobbyists. Like, I really like this game. I'm gonna get into it, but they still have to beat them. That yeah, have to do it, but on like how we were saying for NBA, it is a higher thing. So a lot of times they're not even going to compete against. Like you're never going to watch LeBron cross up some random dude on the street in a, in a street ball. Yeah. You're never going to watch it because he's not. You know, unless he's doing some type of charity event or he's like really bored, he's not going to go down to like Greensboro, North Carolina to find the closest YMCA and start playing yeah. basketball. We all know what happens. It, we know <laughs> it's not entertaining to watch. It's not like. I mean, it's it's embarrassing. It's interesting. It's like funny, but it's yeah. not like, oh my god, what's gonna happen next? Like, I'm not gonna watch Jamal, Jamal who works at nine to five at Starbucks, dunk on LeBron James. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. But like, like I was saying, there's people with natural skills in esports where you can watch people absolutely beat the sh- out of like Ninja Tifu and Shroud. Uh, I'm saying Fortnite people, but like the, the you get to just. It's probably some random dude that just got back from his nine to five. Yeah, like he gets back playing Call of Duty. He's, he hops on. He just watches Doctor Disrespect. He sees the kill cam. Goes, oh. <laughs> that's crazy. He goes, oh, well, that's pretty cool. <laughs> but like esports, like they just have to keep esports. They just have to keep keep going, keep evolving. They just have to keep it. They can't stop because the second anybody who play games, the second they take a break off a of game until they get back onto it, they're still going to keep some of those skills, but they're going to take a while. And then there's different metas. Like, there's not different metas in sports. Like you play metas. Sport. What do you mean by that? Okay, so metas is basically what characters or what strategic thing or what uh, what process is just better than any other process. Yeah. So like if I'm playing Overwatch and Cassidy just does it's like hit scandal with projectile, Cassidy just does way more damage than anybody else. He has way more survivability. He has more health now, et cetera, et cetera. He just met, he like, he's really... He's better. He's just better. He's better. But, and that has a lot to do with different game updates, different balancing issues. To uh, leagues, like professional leagues like the NBA and NFL, they're probably having, uh, like, they're having, like, a different role book maybe, like, once every couple of years. Yeah. Versus, like, or, like Overwatch, where they're updating it once every, like, couple of months. Or Fortnite, with a couple of, they're literally updating it every four weeks. So I think that it's just that learning curve. Like you have to continuously keep learning versus practicing a single skill. So you can't yeah. stay on one skill again. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's kind of like any sport where you just have to keep going or you're going to... You're going to fall off somewhere. You're going to fall off somewhere, yeah. It's, yeah. It's cool. I never really thought about it that way. Um, I'm excited to see how esports and just sports in general will evolve over the next like even 20 years oh my god it can't not evolve yeah it's, it's impossible like during covid i don't know if you know this buffalo wild wings has an esports league now and 2k i mean, did not know that the nba has their own 2k league and the uh nfl has their own Madden league because once everybody can compete in real life they compete in games because yeah they, they still want that they, that gladiator system they still want that entertainment but we can't get it anymore. It risks our own safety. Right. And so, what do you do? You turn on digital. Because a lot of games, especially with the graphics nowadays, you turn it in front of your grandma or your grandpa, they're not going to know it's a game. 
So uh, you're watching these games, and as long as they're not doing anything like too crazy, like, yeah. As long, but as long as they're still giving the show and stuff, it's just always going to be. That's why esports kind of took its boost initially during COVID, because uh, I think it was NSPN or ESPN. They started playing esports instead of actual games because they couldn't I had get no the idea. Footage. They couldn't get the footage until like, like almost the final wave of COVID when people kind of did those, um, those like computer screens in the prior load and they were like at home watching the game and stuff. Yeah, I remember like that. until they did that, until they could do that, they could only do games. They could only do like two K games, Madden games, FIFA games because they had to. They still had to make money. They that was like what. A three-year, four-year coursing, they still have to be money that whole time. Yeah, they can go on. So there. they, if they can't go, to, if they can't do sports, they'll do esports. So, and since it's such a low opportunity, since it's such a high niche, it's like everybody, no matter who you are, there's at least one game out there for you. And since it's such a like a big community, it's always going to be somewhere. It's just a slow, low budget to start. It's always going to be somewhere. It might not be like. That it is at the time, like right now, it's not as big. Like at this moment, it's not as big as it was during COVID. But it's right. not. It's not slow at all. It's not yeah, slow. it's not declining. It's yeah. just doing. The it's just steady now. It's basically like just. Well, versus like other companies during COVID, where a lot of companies where it was like basically their whole service was a face to face thing, where they just they had to because they couldn't do anything else. Yeah, I wonder. So. The NBA and, like, the NFL started, like, Madden and 2K games. I wonder if, like, they made money. They made money. They got they made money. They draft picks. Did you know that? For real? They do, like, you know the NFL draft pick? Like, number one draft Like, they, they draft, like, eSport. Yeah, they do, like, actual ceremonies and draft picks for, like, number... Like, they do... The way it's set up for... I know 2K... They have, you know, there's like, it's a, uh, on the court, there's like five people, I think, like that. Yeah. They have a person for each position, and they only practice stuff in that position, and then they have substitutes, too. What? And they make, they make money. Like, they are not underpaid at all, especially for a gamer. They make, Charlotte, for example, uh, the, the Charlotte Hornets, yeah. they have an esports arena inside of their stadium. I had no idea. Yeah. They, they make money, dude. Like that's that's literally their backup plan, and not only backup plan. That's like an entire. They have people on the high corporate end, only to worried about the esports of it, because that's still a way to make money. At the end of the day, it's still a way. To, even if it's a plan B, that plan B is making a ton of money, <laughs> like a lot of money. Like I feel like I've just been living under a rock. I mean, like <laughs> so long. Th- that's the thing, because I'm in esports. Like I like I look at this stuff, and I didn't know that existed until like I went to the Charlotte Hornet, and, and they were telling me because I I study hospitality. Yeah, they're telling us like, yeah, we do esports. I see it, and I was like, what do you mean? And they were giving us some breakdown on how they do esports. I was like, that's is that's cool, but that's insane. Yeah, that's insane. I uh, I'm a little worried though. With esports, the growth of esports, mm-hmm. with um, just the amount of energy, and mm-hmm. I guess yeah, energy that computing that amount of computing takes up from like the environment. Are there any like sustainability practices within the industry that you know of? Yeah, there's definitely some. Um, I'm not gonna lie, there's a lot of. There's a lot of carbon emissions in these <laughs> yeah. because they have all those computers, all those things. But um, I would say it's like, I don't know, how would I put it? Esports have to be non geographical, right? In order to be considered in sports, we have to have at least the ability to be able to play with someone across the world and still compete against each other. Yeah. Right? And, but it doesn't have to be that way. There's things called like land events where you're like playing against somebody right next to you. So, like me, you will play the game, but we're playing. Uh, so that's one way to just have those people just play in the same place right and like if there's games where you only need one system like Smash like you only need that one system you don't need 16 computers or 10 computers something in a regular length that one Overwatch game where it's like 5v5 five five. yeah so you like uh, you just need that one uh, switch and a monitor and you're good but there's also a lot of these person coming in that know they do like I don't know they use solar panels majority like they don't use um actual search like search uh thing 
for two reasons. Only because a lot of esports stadiums take a lot of energies and not a lot of facilities can support it. Yeah. And secondly, it's because of the uh, carbon emissions that are emits. So they kind of like counteract it a little bit. But the best thing about it is that it doesn't have to be like, and instead of having all those people in one place or whatever, you can have all those people in the comfort of their own homes and their own living room where it's going to be all in any ways, play, still playing against each other. Yeah. It doesn't have to be these big, grand old events. You can literally have the entire stream or the entire competition on Twitter or on um, like Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. Yeah. yeah. So when you say like carbon emissions, I'm just dumb question. How does it emit carbon? There's, is it? It's not the computer, it, right? It's yeah. like the back end. That's what I mean. There's um, there's things called stakeholders, and especially in the business like this, where literally everything, everything is affected by esports. So if a if it's a turn and where people have to go, right? Buying airplane tickets, buy uh, cabs, that's Ubers, bus tickets, train tickets, all these things. So that's one way. And then you have all these. Um, but if you didn't know, cows are the biggest car emission, right? Right. You're having all these people in one area get you like it's more dense down. And so, say they have one in Raleigh, uh, in Raleigh, North Carolina. And Raleigh is already a big place, but now they're having this esports, this huge esports convention. If Raleigh, Raleigh is literally over esports, so they have this really big esports convention. And now, not only do you already have a big city, but you have all these new cars and planes, dude, everything coming in. And then on top of that, you're having like. Since they're they're here now, they're buying like they're buying food, they're buying all these like consumer items and stuff like that, and they still need, again transportation and stuff. Like, yeah, just everything. That, I mean, that's just tourism in general. Like every bad part of tourism, without saying the sustainability, like all the all the like uh, animal slaughtering, all that type of stuff, has right. to happen more when there's more tourists. And yeah. since esports is such a fast paced industry, it's just fast events. Like, by the time one event's over, it's already the next big thing, probably, like, the next week. That's crazy. I never really thought about the whole, like, economics of, like, a big esports tournament. They have, like, all these people um, in one place, mm-hmm. coming from, like, all around the world. And, like, let's like, think, because you could say the same thing about, like, the championships or the NBA or WrestleMania or the Super Bowl. Yeah. But the most beautiful thing about esports is that it can all be d- watched on your, on your uh, phone. Yeah. The whole thing. You don't you don't have to leave your house to get the same experience unless you're playing. But yeah. then you don't have to leave your house. Like, yeah. I'd argue it probably costs less. It probably costs less to like the cost meaning like mon- monetary and also um What's the word? Like, uh, like opportunity cost mm. type thing. Like, amount of emissions, like, all that kind of stuff. It probably costs less to host an esports event than, like, a big sporting event. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Yeah. It costs less. I mean, because first of that position would be, like, you could make the whole thing entirely online. So, you, if just that alone, it's like streaming on Twitch is free. Right, it's like, pass free. You don't have to do anything, or YouTube. You don't have to pay anything. It's all free. Or where it goes to like the Super Bowl, or not even not even the Super Bowl, a day to day bread of the mill uh, NFL game, like millions of dollars are wasted just for like buying player, uh, not buying players, but paying players, doing venue CD, doing marketing, all that type of stuff. Millions of dollars. Yeah, for literally. All you have to do is have a already decent following, and all your marketing is not put. But the majority of your marketing is either people scrolling on their phone or a notification bar. That's crazy. It's like insane. Yeah, that's so crazy. I never really thought about about it that way. Because if you're a big company like Epic Games, I was gonna say you see their commercials, you see it on YouTube, even if you're not gaming, you see a Fortnite commercial somewhere. Yeah. I but, feel like everyone knows what Fortnite is now. Yeah, exactly. And if you're like a diehard fan, you're obviously going to follow. Or even if you're not a diehard fan, even if you're just like, a, like it's your main game right now, you're obviously going to follow. You want to keep up with the updates. You want to make sure you're still pretty good in, in the competitive world. 
And so you follow these people, and then you follow their, their YouTube to see all their trailers, all their new updates, the next season coming out. And then, oh, shoot, they're having a multi-million dollar street going on right now. Let me tune in. It take, it's still that simple. Or you don't have to be following them. You're just scrolling, and you're a gamer in general, and you're just typing in it. Like, say you're you're wanting to get into Fortnite. I keep using Fortnite because right. it's like the most basic game that people know. You're wanting to get into Fortnite, but you don't, right? You're like, I don't know if it's a hard game or whatever. It's happening Fortnite. Every game is having a live stream. Might as well. Yeah, it doesn't cost me a dime yeah. to watch it. Where if you go to the, like, oh, if you go to, uh, like, the NBA game, it costs you, like, at least $100 yeah. for, like, bad tickets. Yeah. But you get the front row seat the entire time because you're right here. That's so cool. Yeah, I feel like this is this conversation so far has swayed my mind a little bit because I've never really viewed video games as like a sport, but I can see how they're like uh, a very profitable entertainment. I mean, that's the thing. the biggest thing uh, when I was because I study uh, esports because of my majors. My college major is hospitality and tourism with a concentration in esports. Right, right. And one of the biggest arguments we had to get across is, is esports a sport, right? And my biggest argument is before our conception of sports, because think about the NBA, NFL, uh, uh, what else is there? And NBL, um, National Baseball League, whatever. You think of all those, like, I think baseball was the first one. That didn't start to like, 18, like, 1892, something like that. Yeah. That, like... Because before that, it was a hobby. It was like kids. I was to say. It was like kids playing in their backyard, and they go, we're going to make a league. And it wasn't that simple, but they're like, we're going to make a league. We're going to have all these professional people who's really good at this game. Yeah. Play it. And the same thing for the N- NBA. The first NBA player, I think they were called like the NBLs or something like that. Yeah. Before they went to the, uh, they like added another league and they made it NBA. They, the people who played the into the league and stuff. They worked regular nine to five. So I mean, yeah. they got back from the construction zone. They got back from the office and started playing basketball. Like it was like a hobby to them. And yeah. Now they're making multi million dollars companies, and they that was like a hundred years ago. Yeah. Esports just started. Like the concept of esports just started maybe like five six years ago. Like so, the mainstream concept maybe just started five six years ago. Yeah. So we're like in a very infantile stage of esports yeah like this is the beginning of esports like that's the crazy part and oh back to what i was saying my my biggest argument to esport being a, a sport before all those major league sports were like considered sports you know what were considered sports yeah chess checkers m- manji all these sports that you use your brain right and a lot of games a lot of especially the games that are literally strategy games are literally you using your mind like, yeah your hands too but like, is you literally you thinking? So before we went to the all gladiatic system of entertainment and sport calling, it used to be like intelligent. Like it used to all be intelligent. I don't want to say a gamer is the smartest people. We can all name some people that aren't the brightest cookies. Right, right. Game. But at the end of the day, you need to have some form of understanding at least in that game. Right. So that's always been my biggest argument: was whatever you think is a sport will change in a hundred years. Yeah, it will. It just will. Everything that you think right now, your grandkids, your great grandkids are not going to think it's the same thing. Besides soccer, I hope soccer always stays the same. <laughs> I love things that are that always stays the same. That's not going to be here for a while. So. Yeah, I love chess. I love soccer. I love painting. Shit that just has not changed. <laughs> I love like yeah, it has a tradition behind it. But I was going to say, kind of like what you said is. All those sports started out as just games that people would play to yeah. have fun. And I, I just realized that I clicked in my head while you were explaining. I was like, all these, they're just games, but now they're evolving to a higher, now that more people are playing it, there's more leagues, like leagues, people playing it, whatever. There's more of interest in it. It becomes more of a thing. And I think that's really cool to see the evolution of that. And I'm excited to see the evolution of that over like, I want to see, like, whenever I have kids, I want to see, like, if they get into esports at all and see what it looks like. Yeah. I'm pretty sure my kids will be into esports. 
Only because like you're only a product of your environment. Yeah. My mom and my dad play games my entire life. That's why I got into gamers mainly because it was like in the house. But obviously, I'm gonna have amazing setup. Right. And they're gonna be like I will play a game and play you together. So obviously, you're just a product of your environment. But I feel like at any time in your stage, like there's people on Twitch. My favorite creator is like uh, Grandpa Gaming. I think his name is Grandpa Gaming. And he plays like Battlefield games, and um, like his favorite game right now is like uh, Battlefield 2042. Even though right. it's not my favorite, but he li- people are watching him just like play around with his sniper and they make jokes like, "Oh, he's living, he's reliving his series stuff like that." But like, no matter what age you are, there is no, no matter what age, gender, sexual orientation, there is no, no division. Right. Like you have the NBA and the WNBA. But in like Call of Duty, you don't care who the fuck you shoot. <laughs> yeah, just shooting stuff like it. obviously there's the stereotype like girls can't play games. I don't know. I can name at least a hundred girls that can whoop my ass in any of my favorite games, no matter what day. Yeah. So like, there's always they're gonna be there's always gonna be stereotypes, no matter what year, what what day, what year, whatever. But at the end of the day, it doesn't cost anything to start. Yeah. But uh, like, you don't have to be a certain demographic to enjoy. Games. Yeah, I like how inclusive it is. Because not only, like, you have to be in a certain demographic, demographic, but also, like, they have made these, like, wonderful controllers for disabled people now. Yeah. You can't, like, oh say God, yeah. I'm so glad you, t- you told me that. Because I don't know if you knew this, but my uh, my mom, she doesn't have any legs or anything like that. Right. And so she just got a car to where she can drive. Because it's based off the game controller. Yeah. Where she can drive with the steering wheel. So, like, even gaming is still going into modern day economics and modern day technology because now she can drive the car around using controllers on her steering wheel. That's so sick. sick. They can like act as the brakes and stuff. But like, there's this one creator who is completely blind. I don't know how. That's like she's like the Stevie Wonder video gaming, but she's completely get blind and she just has like um, audio keys. She just knows what she's doing. And so, or like, there's people who's completely deaf, and like, I know a lot of people play Fortnite. They have like the system setting on where you can see audio track. Well, so just so you don't have to uh, hear, like, know where it's coming from. Yeah. Like, even if it's a competitive advantage, they still, like, the, it, it's so cool that it exists. Yeah. I think it's awesome. It's so hard to transition that from, like, actual sports. Like, it's hard to explain an NBA Finals game to a blind person. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. I know there's, like, videos of people, of blind people going to soccer games. And they'll have, like, a friend on their back that will, like, draw on their back, like, what's happening. So, like, they'll say, like, their finger is going on their back, and this is, like, a person running. And then they'll flick their finger. You want to kick it? Yeah. And then, like, they'll draw a line that gets the ball. And then, then they could do something that, like, symbolizes that the the, the, goal the, the possession changed. And then, like, a goal happened. I think it's really cool. Oh, that's so cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. Cool. And, um... But yeah, you're right though. I feel like that's why like kind of like the Paralympics exists because there's like a whole different uh, league for disabled people to play in to where it's uh, competitive fairness. You know what I mean? Yes. That's so, so yeah, I'm all, I'm all, I'm all for that. <laughs> uh, another question I want to ask, um, and since like. Video games are becoming more popular than ever, and now that kids have more of an access to video games in esports, and I'm someone who is a big, I can't play video games a lot because I'll just I use it as a time suck. Mm-hmm. When I get kind of like depressed, it's like something I play to like escape. Um, and I'm someone who likes to touch grass. <laughs> That's such a what, what's that? <laughs> I like to touch grass. But um I was wondering like if there's like are the now that video games have evolved, are there is the education behind them better to where kids have like a healthier relationship with video games? You can sorry. <laughs> like, is there like a do you think kids these days are like have a healthy relationship with video games now that they're like I mean it's like ingrained since they're born now it's a good question um there are 
educational games and stuff like that. But uh, I feel like the relationship between gaming, there's a lot of games, especially now, geared for kids. Right. Like, you know. But I feel like at that, um, at that level, there's obviously uh, going to be times. There's obviously going to be times where there's a game, they come across a game that's not as family friendly or as PG-13. Yeah. And I feel like at, at that, that's why parental control exists and stuff like that. And that's where the parent comes in. Yeah. Even if you just go into any other source of media, like, I'm not going to say movies or anything, but something very generic, like books, like that has a very positive conversation, connotation. They can stumble on like a smut book at any given time. Yeah. At any given time. And so it's really up to the parent. Right. Of coming up to with how to like, how they best use their technology at hand. And um, when you say, like, it's more like a life set for you and, like, just to escape reality, stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, that's a really interesting point because, like, that's why I love video games because it can be that escape reality. It can be whatever you want it to be. Yeah. It can be that escape from reality. It could be your next career path. It can be your form of communication connection. It can be literally whatever you want it to be or whatever you make it to be. And I feel like it, everybody deserves a chance. Because I, I really hope you're not meaning to escape reality in a bad way. Because everybody deserves a chance to at least experience a different world. And that's yeah. why many movies, books, that's what they try to do. They want you to experience a different world. They want you to like not worry about your your bills right now. They don't want you to worry about your uh, your job. That's uh, feels like a dead end. They just want you to live this world that they're creating. And that's what gaming wants to do. And gaming is just a little bit better because not only are you getting that audio, visual, dopamine, but you get the control. Yeah. In movies and books, you don't get the control of the character, do you? Unless you're writing it. But in, in video games, you control everything. Yeah, I feel like as long as it's controlled and manageable, and, some, and if you're a younger age, below 18 or whatever, I feel like it's not only a good way, it's not only a good way to accept reality, but it's like the safest way yeah I agree with that um little parts of that because I feel like growing up I had access to video games and they weren't controlled by my parents that much um so I feel like I just kind of used video games to escape reality and I did love them as a kid but I think it got to the point for me where I was playing them too much that I neglected the other aspects of my life. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the part of video games where I don't want kids to fall into. Mm -hmm. This is where they're playing it so much where they neglect other important aspects of their life, like how to take care of themselves. Yeah. You know, have good relationships with friends and other people and their Mm -hmm. family and like all that, all that kind of stuff. Um, but I do like the creativity that comes from video games. I love like the world building and also a lot of people who have a lot of like, who are introverts find that they can, they love video games because they don't really like have to present as themselves Mm -hmm. they can still socialize with other people, but not be there like physically. Which is, I think it's kind of cool. And also, like, people with, like, physical limitations, it's a way for them to explore, like, a whole other world without limitations. Yeah. I feel, what was the first part you said of that again? I'm sorry. It was the uh, part where you're, like, you didn't have much control. You want to make sure that they had, like, they take care of their other parts of life? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, that's what I was also, that's also a really popular, like, misconception of everything. Which I wouldn't call it a misconception at all, but it's something I had to learn by the classes. But uh, one of my biggest counter arguments to that is that's every hobby. Yeah. No matter what, there's always going to be extremists. And there's always going to, I feel like gaming is the worst route because it's the easiest to fall that addicted to. Because yeah. I'm, I'm no saying, I have times where I forget to eat when I'm enjoying the game. Yeah. Know? And so I feel like, but that's also with like people who really want to do sports competitively. They'll end up being in the gym way too long. Being the putting putting friend to family aside to do this 
or like uh, I know gym rats are really popular for doing this as well where they everything they talk about they, their entire lifestyle is gym protein fitness everything. yeah so I feel like they're and then a lot of times that much fitness that much protein that much gym time can be harmful and I feel like that's just with every hobby I understand why it is a problem because at, at its core it is a problem but at the same time I feel like as long as you have that support group and people who like can actually be there who tell you hey dude you're like you're doing it way too much yeah like, that's the just with everything like even if I'm going back with books because to me books have like the best connotation there are extremists who only read it like they not only just read books every time you've seen it they have their, their nose in the book they're not as social which isn't a bad thing at all but yeah. it's like they're not as they're not as present, present. Yeah, and they kind of have, like, an obscure sense of reality and stuff like that. And so there's always going to be at least one per- I hope there's always going to be at least one person in your life that's like, dude, you got to do something else. Yeah. You've got to do something else. Because if, I swear, if, I, if it wasn't for my cousins, I would be playing games right now. I would not have left my couch from five years ago. Yeah. I would have just been sitting there playing the same loops of games. But that I started picking up different hobbies like skateboarding and video editing and all this other stuff. And I feel like as long as you're not an extremist, because you can be addicted to anything. Every as long as something gives you dopamine, which is the biggest chemical inducing thing in you, like your body produces that is addicting. Right. As long as it's producing dopamine, you're you're you can get addicted to it. Like yeah. Movie enthusiasts, historians, like professors, literally. That's why you love that's oh, it's mix why people love things yeah i mean and again with the part where you're like it's a good place for introverts to like express themselves and be more comfortable that's why i also like it but i also feel like um that's why i like esports a bit because you're taking those introvert extroverts they're like they're taking those like um introverts introvert, introvert. i kind of like added extroverts <laughs> introverts together today like you're taking those introverts and you're putting them into a positive place, hopefully a positive place, where they that they know that the people share the interest and they can feel that connection with actual human beings and not digital pixels on the screen. Yeah. That's why I like esports when it's the most. So yeah, my kitchen makes it Yeah, that was scary. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Because I feel like a lot of when people think of like chronically online gamers they think of like incels and like oh definitely i mean there's there's definitely people like that there's not a it's not a hidden thing the gaming community does not there's people who are like that but there's people who are like that in everything yeah like literally everything i'm pretty sure most gaming uh, most sports people had at least one fat coach that just wouldn't let up yeah you know so that's crazy but damn (laughs) there's a lot there was a lot Thank you for coming on. Oh, I appreciate you. Uh, I don't really have any other questions. Do you have any questions for me? As someone who doesn't play a lot of video games? What, in your mind, changed the most from when we first started to when where we are now? Um, video games are a waste of time. That's, when you, that's what you feel now, or that's... When we first started, when we first started, oh. I view video games as a waste of time. But after this conversation, I think my thinking needs to be less black and white with it. Like it needs to be less black and white because I have a lot of memories in my life where um, video games have been a part of it like been a good part of it like me and my two best friends Jacob and Amy like we bond over like playing FIFA every time we hang out we play FIFA that's like just like our thing because we've been playing FIFA since we were like kids so we want to see like who's still better at playing FIFA so they're not entirely bad I think it's just like you need to have a better relationship with it and it's like it's like everything like your personal relationship with it needs to improve so um and also, I didn't think video games was could be a, a career. <laughs> like, I'm for not for me, obviously, because I'm terrible at it. 
I'm terrible at video games, but you know, I see why like people put so many hours into it because there's like the opportunity to make money from it, which is like I think it's really really awesome that people are able to have these opportunities now compared to even just like five years before. So I think I learned a lot. I appreciate it. Yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> well, cool. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Goodbye. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's chill. Only an hour to get back.